The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Hi, welcome to the Mind, Body, Spirit Show. This is going to be a very interesting uh, show today. It'll be about the Mozart effect, the uh, effects and the power of music to, to heal the body uh, and the spirit. Uh, this has been around, frankly, for thousands of years. Ancient tribes, they had uh, drumming and sang chants and, and music uh, to promote wellness uh, and, and, and uh, in their uh, group, this, this, but the science behind this, uh, and uh, a doctor, uh, uh, Don Campbell, uh, wrote quite a bit about this, and uh, many books, CDs, uh, DVDs, uh, you can uh, uh, get them if you want to hear more, but uh, th that music affects our body, our, our mind, our soul, our spirit, it can lift us up, it, it can be depressing. Uh, and uh, uh, for example, so it stimulates learning and memory. There are, depending on the loudness and, and the, uh, the hertz, for, for example, uh, will determine whether it makes you feel better or makes you feel worse. Uh, and we'll review that. So it can play a beneficial role in the treatment of strokes and dementia uh, chronic pain, uh, for example, I, I stopped doing neurosurgery a few years ago now. I teach more mind-body aspects and, and, and health. But uh, neurosurgery, obviously, could be pretty stressful. Uh, uh, and uh, I'd get in my car, uh, going to another hospital, say, and I had somebody driving behind me, and they had my phone number, and they called up and said, how come you're waving your, your arm in the air? And, and I, I said, I'm conducting the orchestra. I put on a, a CD that made me feel better and de-stress in seconds, seconds. I was feeling so much better from a very stressful day uh, and, and night. So it helps in, in uh, even an intrauterine uh, a child, uh, it, it can affect it. Uh, whether the mother and father are talking to the child or whether playing music. Mozart, for example, uh, he, when he was in, in, in the uterus, the, the mother would play the piano and the father would play the violin. And it has now been sh shown uh, that uh, the uh, ear uh, is one of the first organs to develop uh, in the uh, human body, uh, and in about, when you enter it, about uh, 20 to 24 weeks, the infant can already feel vibrations or hear what the mother is saying, where the music is being uh, played, uh, and uh, that affects their life. Uh, infants where the parents spoke to or uh, created sounds through music to the infant uh, affects, for example, th their odds of becoming a musician or to be relaxed and a happy person or a depressed person or whether they enjoy going to concerts, for example. That's all been, been proven. Uh, uh, then uh, uh, they found, uh, before a lot of medicines came along for seizures, they used music and found uh, children had less convulsions, less seizures if they listened to music for a period of time, they found it lowers blood pressure. It only makes sense. Take stress away and the blood pressure will drop. It also 
found that uh, people who put so cassettes put music in their ears so they play it at the workout uh, place, that the ex their performance and exercise is, is a lot better. And it's been used to teach people how to decrease the stress in their life. It's your sector as uh, uh, work for me, whether you're walking uh, into a facility or a place uh, like a dental office where I was recently, and they were playing music, and I was listening to this beautiful music, uh, and I uh, uh, didn't pay a lot of attention to what they were doing uh, inside my mouth. I had very little uh, pain, and time I walked, the music w uh, w was done, uh, the dentist was done, and I said, oh, where was I? I was living in, in dreamland, I think, but it's useful. So it, it's been found to help with autism uh, and uh, uh, attention deficit disorders, for example, learning disabilities. Music has been found to be helpful. It, it's also improved people who have problems with substance abuse, whether it be narcotics, marijuana, pain medication. Uh, uh, that, uh, and, and the reason music does this, it actually causes the release of neurotransmitters in your b body, serotonin. Uh, dopamine, dopamine is the quick fix. You light up a cigarette, dopamine is released. Uh, drink alcohol, do the same. But music, which is a lot healthier, can, can do that too. Uh, and it can send the vibrations to your body. You feel like uh, dancing, you're moving. Uh, all healthy activities, uh, for example. And people can concentrate better uh, if they listen to some music, actually. So, you know, it depends on the decibels the hertz on how loud it is, and they found it increased creativity in all age groups. Yeah. And as, as you well, very well may know, uh, it's great in, in exercise. If, when I go work out at Planet of Fitness or Species, sometimes I will uh, have an uh, iPhone with music and it's going into my ears and I exercise a lot better. I find myself actually at uh, Planet of Fitness working out for a while and listen to music. And then I uh, do some walking, for example, and I'll be singing a song. Yeah, that makes me feel great. I, time I get done with my uh, one hour of exercise, I feel like I'm in heaven. So it's a combination of my uh, exercise machines, my, my weightlifting, and then some music. And when I walk out of the building, I literally <laughs> dancing. Try it. It may uh, work for you. Uh, there were many. Uh, I encourage you to read th this book called The Mozart Effect, uh, published, I think, 1995 by uh, Don Campbell. And at the beginning of his book, uh, he writes about it a little bit. And he says it stimulates learning and in, in memory. And uh, uh, for example, and uh, the list that I went through with you already. But then on the, the next page, uh, he has written many other books, uh, tapes, compact discs, uh, audio books, for example, a uh, tremendous resource of other things that you might uh, enjoy listening to or reading or enjoying or uh, learning more about the science of uh, uh, music. Uh, and uh, uh, so another person you hear a lot about in music and healing uh, is Alfred Tomatis. Alfred Tomatis, he's from Paris. He lived about 1820 to 2001, and he devoted his life to researching the, the Mozart effect and the effects of music, frankly, on everything, every, every part of the human body. And there were Tomatis centers all over the world. I actually visited his center uh, in Paris one time, uh, and he had a huge waiting room and, and, uh, or exercise room, whatever you want to call it, but there were uh, people of all ages, uh, children, uh, very young children, older people, middle-aged people, all uh, doing some sort of uh, auditory uh, stimulation. So, there were a lot of earphones uh, in there, so some were listening. Uh, and and I, I talked to a nun I happened to see there, 
uh, and she said she just came in that day to get her traumatis fixed. She was a very busy person, very stressful life, uh, and she would just come in once a week uh, to uh, listen uh, to some uh, Mozart music and, and learn something new, uh, and it relaxed her. It, it reduced her stress. She felt uh, better. So uh, Don Campbell did years of uh, research, many, and he visited many other countries as well as did uh, Tomatis, who published a real big book. I have it, uh, The Physiology of Sound, I have at home. It's really worth uh, uh, reading. Uh, and as a result, uh, music was brought to, to hospitals, to nurseries, to neonatal intensive care units, uh, to pain centers, uh, and, uh, and they discovered the science, like chanting, for example, how that affects uh, the body. So uh, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, who you know lived a very short life, uh, uh, showed the world uh, that music is in creative patterns. He even did some operas, for example. So he said, he's connecting you with the speech of angels and, and Adam's, the, the magic flute, for example, uh, uh, shows the, the patterns uh, to you. Uh, so uh, it causes an uplifting of our soul, our spirit, our compassion, love. And then if you add dancing, and I take tap dancing, for example, I've always enjoyed dancing in general, and right now I do tap dancing <laughs> to the Bee Gees. Yeah, about 20 minutes worth almost every day. But I feel the music in my body, uh, and not all types of music does that. You get to pick your own music. So the Bee Gees seem to hit the pattern for tap dancing for me, and I think that music enters my muscles, my, my whole body, and I feel like I'm in another world. So I've exercised the mind, uh, the body, my soul, uh, and I feel I, I do it every day, and then I take some lessons with it. Uh, also, uh, and I've taught it to uh, other people, and, and I'm, I'm going to probably continue tap dancing as long as I live. I started three years ago. I think it's good for you. It's exercise. It works on my balance, and it, it uh, certainly de-stresses the mind. Everyone has stress. Uh, everyone has stress in their life, uh, and, and life is stress, uh, so it's important if you do something besides smoking or alcohol, uh, marijuana is going around. I tell high school kids I gave a lecture to recently to bring music into their life. Maybe take up uh, dancing. Uh, uh, what type is, is up to you, whatever you uh, enjoy. Uh, so, uh, uh, so music can dance and sing our blues away. We're a little bit depressed. We don't feel good. Uh, in church, for example, uh, I go to many different churches just to learn their cultures. I, I was um, largely in a black church uh, recently, and, and it really taught me I my mean, usual church service one hour, but I think this went three hours. But it, it was nothing, uh, it, most of it was music and dancing and, and the minister essentially <laughs> lying on the floor and, and singing a song of what tremendous voices. Uh, and at the end of that time, uh, I really almost had a transformation. And one thing I learned there too, I, I, I think these people really believed in, in their church uh, and largely done through music. It may have tribal origins from years ago in Africa, I don't know, that pro, pro, may, maybe it does. Uh, so it connects the, the sounds of the breath and the body and the universe and the stars uh, and uh, they even think that in, in nature there is a background music uh, uh, to uh, outer space. I, I believe that. So it's the primal uh, breath of creation. Music is the speech of angels. So uh, uh, there's a healing breeze of sound. I take a walk in nature almost every morning and used to listen to the, to the wind and the rustling of the leaves, uh, the leaves falling down, just to listen to that noise. It's so uh, 
relaxing. Millions of people are seeking alternatives to, to a modern medicine. In my experience as a neurosurgeon, 70 to 80 percent of the people, what they came to see me about, they were looking for surgery on their spine or, or something. Most, most of the time, uh, uh, really, it was stress. I would always say, what's going on in your life? And, 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 and many providers would concentrate on the x-rays. I concentrated on their mind. What was going on? Maybe the symptoms were related to that. Maybe anxiety, maybe uh, depression. And the x-ray had nothing to do with the problem. I call that the placebo, nocebo effect, negative speak. Uh, uh, so uh, instead of a, uh, MRI or CT through the operation, a lot of times I led to stress reduction, walking, uh, music, not even using a medication, playing tennis or pickleball or tap dancing like I do. Uh, so 70, 80 percent of the illnesses I saw as a neurosurgeon all these years was lifestyle what they were eating, whether they were exercising or not. Uh, so music is the most powerful medium available, and it's cheap, and it works quick. Remember, I uh, spoke to you about uh, me conducting the orchestra. I felt better immediately. Uh, so where does sound have its beginnings? The vocal nourishment the mother and father give to the infant is critical. So speak to your baby, tell stories to your baby, uh, play music f uh, for the baby. So uh, the nourishment that the mother provides to a child is critical. It is just as important to the child uh, than, frankly, Dr. Campbell thought in his book, The Mozart Effect, the nourishment of milk, that the sounds were very important vocal nourishment. They cry less. They've run studies uh, where babies uh, were crying. They started playing music. They, they studied 90 of them, uh, and they were all crying for one reason or another. Turned on, on soft music, and they stopped crying within seconds. Because mm -hmm. real trans neurotransmitters of dopamine and serotonin are then secreted in the body, affects every cell in their body, and makes them feel good. Uh, so, uh, music makes patterns in the brain, uh, like math and chess, that, that has been discovered because they put water uh, and crystals uh, next to sounds and form. They reorganize, those crystals reorganize themselves uh, in geometrical patterns. That's been proven. So, the science behind that, okay? Uh, so the Mozart effect is like a Rosetta Stone for the code. It, it's actually established mathematically. So spatial intelligence is improved uh, with uh, Sonata for two pianos, for example. If you listen to that, your s spatial intelligence improves. Uh, so Mozart music, uh, which is actually a lot of times quite simple, uh, organizes these uh, patterns. and. Uh, they studied 34 preschoolers and found uh, that their memory uh, improved after listening to Mozart uh, music. Uh, so Tomatis, Alfred Tomatis from Paris, was the Einstein of sound. He studied in such detail. I encourage you to read his book. Uh, and and uh, he, he studied over 100,000 people, okay, to the point they called him Dr. Mozart, okay, just like I play pick a ball, I, I uh, spin the ball a lot, so they call me Dr. Spin. <laughs> so Tomatis was Dr. Mozart. Uh, I don't think they'll ever be calling me that. And uh, so there's a difference between listening and hearing. You know, we're listening noises going around about us, but are we really hearing? So there's a difference, and we need to be taught the difference, uh, how to, uh, block out certain sounds, how to bring in certain uh, sounds. That, that Dr. Campbell uh, stressed that quite a bit. Uh, what are you paying attention to? Are you really hearing the noises uh, uh, around you? Uh, and, and I have enough concentration, actually, I can do that. I can go into a place 
and read a book, and I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything, okay? So I'm not hearing, so we have to be conscious to really hear the things uh, around you and not have distractions, uh, for example. So we have a conscious uh, ear, okay? Uh, uh, infants, interuterine infants, they hear a low frequency sounds a lot better uh, than high frequency sounds. Uh, and it, and uh, they relax and tense up too from uh, what they're feeling through vibrations and sounds they pick up. And then they hear the mother speak. The mother's voice uh, becomes very important uh, in their life. Some children never went through this birth process, uh, uh, sometimes called uh, C-sections. In C-sections, they never receive the bacteria they pick up going through the vagina, which is what grows the bacteria in their gut so that they can drink mother's milk quite easily. Uh, same as with sounds. They never went through some of the sounds uh, of a, a birth process. So we now speak about, Tomatis would speak about a sonic birth. The sounds an infant might hear before they're born, intrauterine, and after they're born. Uh, so one of the treatments for autism uh, is recreating the birth process. That's one of the uh, treatments. Uh, so it, it's, and if they use it as a treatment, it needs to be a filtered sound to make it a real sound, okay? The violin concerto of Mozart are the most healing. Yeah, the most healing. I notice they're the fastest too, though. Uh, but uh, so normal birth, the mother and father must speak to the child frequently before birth, after birth. So there is such a thing as the science of lullabies. Uh, so the embryo uh, is aware of a mother's heartbeat, maybe just like my two cats at home who seem to sleep all night. Uh, on the left side of my chest, their ear must be one inch from my heartbeat. So there's electromagnetism uh, around the brain, but much stronger around the heart. And I think my cats are, are, are picking up the electromagnetic activity of, of my heart. That's been going on uh, for years. And uh, occasionally it even wakes me up. <laughs> okay. And uh, the ear starts to develop uh, in, in, in the uterus uh, at about 18 weeks. At about 18 weeks. Okay. Uh, at 24 weeks, it's quite active. The ear is uh, turned on. Uh, so babies who hear music, uh, they found out, they studied them, are the most avid concert goers. <laughs> yeah, interesting. And uh, uh, my wife, for example, uh, loves going to concerts. So do I, but hers is more uh, uh, even than me. And, and her mother was a musician. Mm, yeah, played the accordion and the piano. So I think she picked up some of that, yeah. She really likes classical music. And you don't you really wonder if she picked it up then? Uh, so Mozart and Vivaldi are the, uh, uh, is a music that seems to help the infants the most. Uh, the, uh, so the baby read to the baby uh, uh, at about three to four months. Read some stories to them. The baby will pick up on it. Uh, it's interesting. Uh, so, uh, people who have depression, for example, who just feel down, 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 very common, depression is common, mild, medium, so very severe, uh, uh, but uh, movement and music, movement and music uh, can raise them out of their depression, and sometimes it's better than a pill and a lot cheaper, okay? Uh, and uh, so, if you're feeling down all the time, play some music you know, throughout the day in your house, in your car, maybe even at work, so you don't disturb people, plug it in your ear. Uh, uh, and like I said, for me, what works real good, uh, I do it every day. I bought, bought a little Marley floor, which is a little bit bigger than this table right here. Uh, and I turn on the Bee Gees. Uh, Alexa, play music from the Bee Gees. Come, how easy that is comes right on and I've tap dancing away about 20 minutes, and I've had good exercise. I feel relaxed. It affects my whole body. I seem to feel 
feel the vibrations of that music in my body. I'm always looking for songs I can tap dance to, and they're easy to find. Uh, and uh, although in my car today, I had on the music of Greece, I thought, yeah, I'll try that one tomorrow. Alexa, play the music of Greece. Or you can say, Alexa, play the music of uh, uh, Mozart. Uh, actually, I visited Salzburg uh, one time, Vienna, and, uh, and I actually went to the house that he lived in, and he had 626 pieces of music he had written. They all piled up all the way to the ceiling. I saw that, a very thrilling, very thrilling uh, uh, day. So, and if, so I, I recommend uh, exercise and music, uh, whether you're uh, using a treadmill or dancing or whatever, uh, it, it, it has value. It reduces stress. Another thing you could try is humming a tune. You know, a low decibel uh, a tune, for example. Yesterday I walked out of nature as usual, and after reading this book, I, I sang the words to myself, Alleluia, you know. Alleluia. And uh, uh, oh, what a beautiful morning. God, I sang the whole song, okay. <laughs> yeah. And uh, oh, what a beautiful day. I have a wonderful feeling. <laughs> Everything's going my way. I'm having that kind of a day today. So memorize the songs, and while you're walking, sing it. It goes throughout your body. And then I notice the birds start following me, cardinals are tweaking at me. Uh, and, and, and I'm looking at nature. I'm looking at the leaves and the trees and the leaves falling down and, 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 and humming and singing. What do you think? After about 45 minutes of that, I felt like I was in heaven. I felt wonderful. And uh, so I hum a happy tune on a clear day. Climb every mountain, whistle a happy tune. Uh, doesn't, as one told me uh, one time when I said, well, I, don't, I, I mean, I can play music. I played the piano even at age 14 at Carnegie Hall. I wasn't that good, but I did do it. Uh, and I said, well, I, I uh, can't sing in, in uh, June. And uh, Species said, I can teach anybody to sing. So I've been doing it two years now and uh, memorize a number of songs and find it uh, very relaxing. I'm not going to Carnegie Hall to say the least <laughs> for my singing, but I'm having a good time. Uh, so, or make up songs, sing it to the child. Uh, so, uh, Terry Woodward from The Temptations uh, put together a lot of tapes and CDs, brought them to hospitals all over the country, uh, and, and needle needle ICUs, uh, uh, patients' rooms, uh, I, I've listened to them in, in, in dental places, they relax you. And uh, here's another one, Dr. Zeus's, uh, the cat and the mouse uh, should be played f uh, for women in the last trimester of their pregnancy. Uh, it's very relaxing, affects the uh, baby. Uh, so Mozart music, why is it used? It's pure and simple, not mathematical like Bach. Bach music is a lot more complex, a lot more mathematical. Part of the, and, uh, but you should relate to the music that you like, uh, not that somebody else like, that you like. So Mozart is just one of the best, but you could try other music that might work for you, okay? Why not the Beatles or Beethoven? And uh, uh, Mozart seems to calm the listeners, uh, but uh, uh, maybe it's the melodies, the frequencies, the rhythm of it. Uh, it's, it's hard to say. Uh, but it's pure and simple, so it stimulates the creative and emotional centers in a person's brain. It actually affects the actual neurotransmitters uh, in, in your brain. They've shown it through PET scans uh, where they can actually uh, see the nerves uh, light up. So this is, this is real. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, violins with faster rhythms seem to be more exhilarating uh, and increase exercises. And uh, so, but Mozart himself was a gifted performer at age four. But remember the history of his parents and music uh, that they played for him, piano music, violin music, uh, probably the day he was conceived, every day, uh, and then the ear developed over the next uh, few months. He, Mozart could write music by age six, yeah. by age six, okay? Uh, and uh, 
the word music came from the word muse uh, in, in history, uh, in mythology. Uh, they thought one of the muses uh, was, was the, the god of poetry, music, arts, and science. And, uh, and, and that's in, in uh, mythology. Uh, so uh, Dr. Campbell wrote about the anatomy of sound and hearing and listening, distinguished them. He, he lived in 1988 in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, he's not alive anymore. And I found that out from another book he had written, The Healing at the Speed of Sound, a book I just got from Amazon yesterday when I was reading it this morning. Uh, which is uh, unfortunate, but he lived a right old age. Uh, so sounds, he, he said, are organized in shapes and patterns and figures uh, and, 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 and mathematical, uh, not all of them, and they speak of bliss and agony. Uh, so where did all this begin? Uh, going back thousands of years, the Easterners, uh, for example, China, uh, India, uh, they related to sounds, and they would use uh, the sound, the om, you can see om or the om. And if you wanted to meditate, for example, to quiet your mind, think nothing of the past, nothing of the future, but now your mind is, and you're watching your breathing, but your mind still isn't quiet, but to repeat the word om, 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 say it 10, 20 times, and your mind will quiet. I did it years ago when my blood pressure would be up in the morning from neurosurgery. Uh, but if, if I did that, uh, did some deep breathing, about 10 real deep breaths, and repeated uh, the word, the om, that's, uh, that's energy of the, of the mind, my blood pressure would drop. So uh, something to uh, think of. Uh, so. Uh, sound travels, incidentally, in waves uh, and is measured in frequencies, uh, which is pitch, okay, and frequency, how fast uh, it, is it going, and intensity, uh, it, which is measured in hertz. The human ear uh, can hear about 20 to 8,000 hertz, but most of our, but the, the, actually the ear can go from 16 to 20,000 but most of what we hear was in the range that I gave you. A piano is about 28 hertz to about 4,186. One note to the next note uh, uh, is, is about uh, that vibration. Uh, Tomatos, uh, Tomates uh, said uh, that at 3,000 to 8,000 hertz uh, is where, where we affects us the most, makes us feel the best. Uh, so uh, uh, it improves our memory and spatial orientation. Uh, 750 to 3,000 hertz affects the heart and the lungs. Remember I spoke about my cats that seem to resonate with my uh, uh, heartbeat. They seem to act like they look up me with their eyes. And I can literally read the brain waves which say, I love you. <laughs> Of course, I say it out loud back to them. I don't think they hear it, but maybe the heart, the heart hears it. I, I really think they do. So loudness is measured in decibels. The leaves, as you're walking, is about 10 decibels. A whisper is about 30. Uh, quiet home, 40 to 50. Conversation, 60. Motorcycle, 100. Uh, rock music, 115 decibels, okay? Give you some idea. Uh, pain begins generally at 125 decibels, so that can bring on pain. Uh, uh, so th the shape of sound is geometric. Remember, we spoke about crystals and water, and uh, so chords in a piano, you might play with your left hand, are largely uh, are mainly beauty or chaos, depends how organized they are. And uh, so noise can annoy you. Uh, and for example, you might want to wear earplugs for certain kind of noises, and, and they can harm you. I mean, uh, if you listen to very loud music all the time, you can get some hearing loss out of that. Uh, so uh, what supplies, uh, so in the ear, uh, which is the first organ to develop in uterine development, uh, we, we have bones uh, and muscles 
uh, and the effect, they have a blood supply, very small capillaries, okay? And they have found one of the earliest signs of type 2 diabetes, which is largely vascular disease, uh, from elevated serum insulin to begin the first, not elevated blood sugar, insulin, the first uh, thing to affect in our body is our blood vessels, our hearing. So if someone has hearing loss or Meniere's disease, consider early diabetes. That blood sugar may be normal. Get a serum insulin. If the serum insulin is elevated, they have uh, early diabetes. And the symptoms from that are hearing problems, tinnitus, uh, it's vascular disease. Yeah. Next is eye changes. Uh, uh, next uh, is a uh, problem with sexuality. Those are microvasculature affected by diabetes. So hearing is one of the first things affected. Matter of fact, it, it was the otolaryngologist who paid the most attention to Dr. Joseph Kraft when he connected uh, through experimentation and autopsies, vast disease uh, and hearing. Yeah, uh, he indeed did. Uh, so we do have hearing in our body. There are deaf people who can play music. They appreciate music. Uh, Helen Keller was an example, was blind, couldn't hear, but she could appreciate music. She felt the vibration largely in her hands. Yeah, in her hands. A good book to read. So, uh, also, if you close your eyes, you listen to music, you close your eyes, you will, uh, because you're shutting off one of your senses, you will hear the music you're trying to listen to a heck of a lot better. Just don't be driving a car, okay? And uh, uh, so, uh, a voice, this is interesting, uh, Campbell and Tomatis discovered this, a voice is controlled by what we hear, mm -hmm. by what we hear, okay? So there's an art to listening, remember I mentioned that? Uh, uh, and uh, so 55% of the time we, we're listening to something, maybe 20, 30 of the time uh, we ourselves are speaking. Uh, so the key theme of Dr. Campbell, John Campbell's book really is that our voice is controlled by our ear, isn't that? Uh, interesting. I never thought of it uh, uh, that way. So there's a clear difference between listening and hearing. What are you hearing? Are you paying attention? How well do you listen? Are you really listening? Yeah, think about it. So, so sound is our vitamin C. Yeah. It makes it healthy. It makes us feel good. We're less depressed. We're relaxed. We're spiritual. Uh, so high frequency noises work better, as I mentioned previously. Uh, but even small doses activate the brain, okay? Even small doses. Uh, I like a violin, listen to it for a short period of time at high frequency uh, uh, and can make you feel better. And I mentioned to you that uh, the uh, Tomatis Center in Paris, uh, if you uh, ever go to the uh, Tomatis Center, uh, if you ever go to Paris, I suggest you, you visit the place uh, like, like uh, I did. Uh, and uh, he speaks about there on page 48 of his book, uh, The Sonic Vitamin C, the uh, uh, interlope. And uh, also there's a difference between the right and the left ear. Actually, uh, the right ear is the most important of, of, of our ears. Uh, and it is generally thought that the musical part of the brain is all over the brain, but it's more on the left than the right. Uh, and the right ear sends an impulse across to the left ear. Uh, and uh, for the interpretation of music heard in the left ear, it has to go to the right first. Interesting, interesting, because there's more of the music center on the left side of the, uh, the left side uh, of the brain. Uh, and I remind you again of uh, the tomato center where this nun came in to get her <laughs> tomato cocktail once a week to uh, feel better. Uh, so sound is healing, okay? It's orchestrating, I'm orchestrating your life, okay? 
So there's a mind-body connection. Candace Perk proved that in 1970 or so. She was looking through an electron microscope at NIH, and she saw these receptors on cells, chemicals hitting them, and she said, that's how our chemistry connects to our cells of our body. So how we think affects our body. Then she discovered that our Army, Navy, our Air Force that defend us, uh, our, de our immunity also makes these neurotransmitters. So the mind speaks to the body, the body speaks to the mind. Can you imagine what effect? That's why the music is felt on our whole body. That's probably why uh, certain music that, that I like, like the BG music, it's an, uh, it affects my whole body. Uh, so music can catapult the mind, the body, the heart into, into the very, very quickly. Uh, okay, so your body is an orchestra. It's an orchestra. That's why I was driving down the road after a 10th day in neurosurgery. I was conducting the orchestra. I was conducting my body, and I felt better right away. It's reality. Uh, okay, another good book to read is by Norman Cousins, Anatomy of an Illness. Uh, he, he was very stressed. He had cancer, uh, uh, and he, he went to, and he was, having a lot of difficulty, he went to visit Pablo Gosala, a very famous cellist, and, and uh, he was at his house, and Pablo was, was uh, coming out of the house to join him outside. They had him a picnic, and they had a piano there, and uh, Pablo, he had developed severe arthritis, and the hands were very stiff, and he was bent over uh, and, and looked extremely ill. Uh, and then he came over to the piano, and he started playing uh, some pieces on the piano, and they start playing some Mozart. And before you know it, the whole body loosened up. His hands became nimble. He was racing across the piano keys. And then he took a walk with Norman Cousins, and they walked for an hour like there was nothing wrong. And then after a while, the whole body it came, became quite stiff and his hands are contracted. A real story. You can read the story in Norman Cousins' book, Anatomy of an Illness. Isn't that interesting? The music really healed him for a period of time. A very interesting story. So music is a natural pacemaker. It affects the heart more than any organ because it has, it has more cells, more mitochondria, the energy factories are in your heart. And, uh, and Shakespeare, you know, wrote a lot of his books in cadence, yeah, in cadence, yeah, at a certain pace. And he was listening uh, uh, to music while he's writing his uh, 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 book. And uh, uh, so uh, Mozart is the Shakespeare of opera. Yeah. Mozart is the Shakespeare of opera. Remember, he wrote some operettas. And uh, so music reduces muscle tension. The ear is connected, uh, remember I mentioned to uh, the right one to the left side of the uh, brain. And uh, so now they speak about vibroacoustic therapy for disabled uh, uh, children, acoustic therapy, for example. Uh, and you could find that at a tomato center. Uh, so you could orchestrate your own workout. When I would go to, uh, Planet Fitness, where I uh, would, would work out. I would always listen to music at the beginning of my uh, workout, uh, different types of music, music that I like to listen to. And I became stronger and then did my weightlifting. And near the end, I would be walking through the uh, gym singing a song to myself. Yeah, People were reading my lips. I know they were. <laughs> I'd go out uh, a, a different person, OK? And uh, so there are other types of songs you can listen to. Uh, uh, one that is very good to do is river dance. That will get you to dance and, and move the music. And uh, uh, so uh, while you're stretching, you can play one type of music. Uh, and then another type where you're moving and dancing, river dance. And now we can lay down and play calming music of, of Mozart. So you use different types of music. Uh, you're building, you're orchestrating your workout, okay? And uh, 
So and they found music can increase a person's temperature, actually. Uh, so uh, bass and drums especially would do the drumming circles are an excellent way to relax for people in another world. It's exercise, especially works uh, for elderly much better. Uh, so uh, music increases your endorphins, your feel-good hormones. That's why you feel good, okay? It affects the limbic system. Uh, that affects the hormones of your body. The hormones get secreted, go all over your body and make you feel great. To feel your own morphine, that's your own endorphins, affect the whole body. And uh, uh, so uh, there was a Dr. Ireland, a chiropractor in town, whose wife was from Russia, and they attended a lot of my lectures on the mind-body connection and music and healing. And then I was walking through the hospital today and I saw Rex there and Rex said, my wife's having a baby. So I went upstairs to see her, and she's there uh, smiling, holding the, the baby. And, 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 I, and I asked her, Roxanne, so what kind of anesthetic did I use? She said, Dr. Cashman, I attended all your lectures. I didn't have any anesthesia. It says, I just sang a song and hummed a song to myself. I had no pain. Her first baby. I couldn't believe it. That's what I've been teaching. It happened to her, and, and she's always been that way. Now, she doesn't use pain medication because she uses music, humming, chants to affect her neurotransmitters. The real endorphins uh, get secreted. I mean, this is uh, for real, uh, for real. This is not something she's imagining. She's secreting her own neurotransmitters, and she feels great. And, uh, uh, and also, music can release ACTH as a stress hormone uh, that stimulates uh, 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 stress adrenal glands and turns them on and off depending on our thought process and what's happening to us. So it, it's real through thyroid hormone, um, cortisol, the stress hormone are turned off. Uh, affected by the secretion of the amount of ACTH in uh, uh, the pituitary, the limbic system, hypothalamus, that's connected through your frontal lobe, but how you think, how you think has tremendous effects on your body. That's the mind-body connection as written uh, about by Candace Pert, PRT, you read her book, Molecules of Emotion by Candace Pert. And uh, so uh, the music and sound uh, 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 affects also your Army, Navy, your Air Force, the Marines, your immunity. It, it affects that. Uh, they defend you against the disease and cancer. So uh, music can change our perception. I myself was locked in a closet as a child by some seniors in high school or boarding school and caused claustrophobia in me. And, uh, and I found uh, that I can change my perception of it like in a narrow space on an airplane, uh, by humming a song, singing a song, uh, uh, by visualizing it uh, myself uh, and quietly doing it to myself makes a huge difference. So uh, certain ch chants, which you uh, go back uh, hundreds of years, uh, done in, ch in churches, for example, also affect the lymphatic circulation uh, and uh, your steroid, your stress hormones, and they can be very uh, relaxing. Religious groups do, the, uh, do them, especially in uh, many churches. Uh, and uh, uh, repeating the same word, uh, for example, uh, and singing at the same time. Uh, so music can increase productivity, music can increase romance, dancing, increase memory, uh, changes our perception of time, makes time go by. Gregorian chants, you've heard about them. Uh, so it can increase uh, and decrease digestion, increase endurance. Uh, music can increase feelings of safety uh, in a hospital, uh, in a church, well-being. Uh, and so uh, what about beyond Amadeus? Other music? Yeah, depends the kind of music you like. Gershwin effect, Brahms effect, Beethoven effect, John Lennon effect. Okay, I like to sing the song Imagine. And, uh, Beatles, Placido Domingo, uh, opera music, Gregorian chants. So the pulse, the pace, the pattern, the rhythm, it's a sonic diet. So the pace of life, 
you can regulate it with a type of music. Bring music into your life. And uh, uh, your biography, your past, what you're eating, what you're exercising, what you're listening to determines your present biology. Your present situation depends what you've been doing in the past. The mind, body, spirit affects you, though. It's not just the type of food that you eat or the amount of exercise uh, that you did. Uh, they even found music can affect plant growth. They've shown it. Yeah, yeah, they have shown it. And uh, so plants, uh, certain plants can't get, get enough of it, okay? So we have a drum of life, okay? Uh, so uh, like I mentioned already, drumming uh, can be what you love to do to relax you. Uh, and or relax groups. Uh, so breath means spirit, okay? Uh, uh, or it, uh, the um, Indians, uh, Chinese might call it the prana, uh, your voice, your primal voice, okay? Uh, so your exposure to music, reading, uh, the voice as a child has tremendous effect on what happens in your life, okay? So there's to, there is power in Gregorian chants uh, they've been, do been doing it for thousands of years, uh, uh, but they increased space and time, and they sold millions of copies of Gregorian Champs. You asked Lexa to play one for you. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, entering, so you're connecting uh, with the world, the spirit, religiosity, for example. Uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, and I already mentioned the OM, it would be a spiritual, uh, do wop, okay? Om, 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 om. Oh, shabum, shabum, da, 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 shabum, shabum. That, that also uh, is mind energy and quiets the mind, is relaxing. And, and there's a, even a, a Tao of rap music, for example, where they're speaking words and telling how they really feel, but at the same time they're, they are dancing. I, I, you know, I tap dance. I also learned a little bit about rap, and I've written five spoken words when poetry, and, 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 and I've added some, some, some rap and some tap dancing, uh, uh, some music to them to transmit knowledge uh, in music. Uh, college kids especially uh, uh, like that. Uh, and I presented one at one of the universities recently, and I remember three college girls in the back stood up the next time I came. And they kind of went back and forth and says, we know Dr. Cashman, sugar is a booger and the hooker. So they were, that's what they remembered uh, because the words and that I had done a little body movement uh, and a few tap dances to it, they remembered that. Isn't that interesting? So uh, I think rap is uh, interesting. Uh, so if you can put a story to music, uh, it, 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 it's more easy to remember, has, has more meaning. So. Uh, it, let me read you a few words from a rap song, okay? Today I was bored. Uh, today I was tired. Today I was struck, and I was feeling like muck. I started to rap, and I started to move. In only a few seconds, I was in a new groove. <laughs> okay. So take up tap dancing, rapping, whatever. Uh, uh, and uh, incidentally, you can easily go to some of your uh, iPads, uh, some of your I iPhones, uh, and, and put in uh, music of Mozart. I did it the other day, and <laughs> I think about 100 songs came up. So I play them while I'm driving. Next up, play me music of Mozart, and it, it comes on. And you can, and there's some that you may like, you know, uh, more than others. Uh, so what I'm saying, bring music into, into your life. Uh, patients with cancer, for example. Uh, a doctor wrote a book uh, about the power of positive thinking uh, and music uh, and art in cancer. He had a, a patient in New York. I lived in New York City. I didn't meet him there, but I, I read in his book that he would take a patient with cancer, spread all the body, and took her to the art museum and he took it to music places, uh, to an opera. He did it for five years, and then he had a look at her favorite art, uh, go to her favorite concert, and he studied her five years later, all her cancer was gone. 
One case doesn't prove anything, but after that, Dr. Lachan was his name, he started studying people uh, about positive thinking, relaxation, and music, uh, and, and art, and exercise. He found that, that the lifespan doubled in about 500 people he studied, and the spontaneous cure rate uh, uh, went up. So it, it has application uh, in, the, uh, uh, in a lot of uh, uh, medicine. Uh, and it, you know, you could be, could be, you could be listening, you could be uh, singing, uh, you could be bringing it to your body through walking or exercise or listening while you're doing uh, exercise, and your life will definitely improve. A another book which I might recommend is This Is Your Brain and Music by Daniel J. Leventon. Daniel J. Uh, uh, Leventon, uh, the si he, which is good. Uh, and he describes a little bit in more detail a couple of things I'd like to know about. So what, what is pitch of music? Uh, it's a purely psychological construct related both to the actual frequency of a tone and its relative position in the music scale. Okay, all right. Rhythm refers to the durations of a series of notes. What's the, what's the uh, rhythm, for example? Uh, uh, and, and we already talked about uh, the hertz, uh, the, uh, the loudness, the tempo refers to the overall speed or pace of a piece. Uh, timbre, uh, timbre uh, distinguishes one instrument from another, uh, violin uh, from an accordion, uh, for example. Uh, so the melody is the main theme of a musical piece, the melody, okay. Key has to do with hierarchy of importance that exists between tones, okay. Meter is created by our brains by extracting information from rhythm and loudness. I think it's about all of that you need to know. So uh, thank you for listening to me today. Uh, and and uh, I hope you bring music into your life. If you uh, listen to some tunes and you think they would be great ones to tap dance to, text me about it. Tell me about it, but never know. It may not resonate uh, uh, with me, but I've been, I encourage you to do it. I'm trying to push it at the community, especially with the new Promenade Park. There's a lot of places people could dance, and it would be nice if uh, people would gather from all over the city one or two nights a week, and they're all tap dancing in this empty space or listening to music or doing other dancing. We would have a dancing city. Uh, I, I envision that down the line we'll have kids standing on the street corner tap dancing uh, and have a little box there where they want us to throw a quarter or a dollar bill and they could make some money. I'm a dreamer, you know, uh, and, uh, but it would make us all healthier. Uh, and the city uh, clearly is, is changing uh, and, uh, and the people are uh, responding to get stress out of uh, our lives. We, we all have stress. I hope you attend some of my other uh, talks. I have one on, incidentally, on uh, stopping preventing diabetes, a half hour, 6.30 on Access TV, about diabetes. That, that's rampant. One in two people uh, has a diabetes. I'm trying to prevent it, stop it, and reverse it. I want you to join me in this army. Uh, and uh, incidentally, I see people for free on Friday mornings at the Three Rivers Pharmacy. Call Sheila Walker, 373-1083, every Friday morning there. Uh, tell me your story. Maybe I can get you over stress, uh, narcotics, uh, or uh, uh, your uh, diabetes problem. Again, thanks so much. It's a privilege uh, that I have a chance to speak to you, but uh, I'm always willing to learn, so send me some information, give me a hug, buy me a cup of coffee or come to see me. I do this because I love you and I'm a doctor uh, and uh, I feel it's my responsibility. What's so fortunate about it uh, that it's given me a purpose in life and a good reason to live and I'll always be doing this. Thanks so much and namaste, namaste.